what does it mean to be a villain? In its most technical terms, a villain is an antagonist who directly or even indirectly opposes the goals and desires of the protagonist. However, this definition is flawed at best. Think of characters like Eren Yeager or Kyo Takai and Akoji. They are undeniably the protagonists of their respective stories, and yet many would argue, myself included, that they are also the villains of their series. With this framework, it would seem that the villain is not dependent on the protagonist, and aren't even necessarily an antagonist, but rather people that do bad things. And again, this definition is inherently busted, as morality is such a fickle concept. What is bad to another can be good to someone else. What is good to one person may be bad to the next. As seen with the dynamic between Yuji Tadori and Mahito in Jujutsu Kaisen's second and much better season. In this video, I aim to answer this question, or at least offer some stepping stones on which we can determine what a villain is. I honestly don't think there's a clear cut answer here and I imagine I will not find such throughout this video. Thus, take this as little more than gushing about the inspiration for this video, Himiko Toga, in My Hero Academia's brilliant seventh season. This essay will assume you have watched up to the current episode, but will not spoil the manga, as I myself haven't even read it. This video may also contain some uncomfortable themes, but they won't be covered in the depth that I would normally do so, Thus, this video should be safe to watch, but as always, viewer discretion is advised. So who is Toga? I won't bore you with a character summary as if you're still watching this video, I'm assuming you already know who she is or what she's about. No, instead, I want to answer a much more pressing question. Who is Himiko Toga? There is a video I've wanted to make for a while which is an analysis on Banish from the Heroes Party, I decided to live a quiet life in the countryside. Yes, seriously. In that series, from what I remember at least, when people get their powers, it fundamentally changes them as a person. And an episode of the anime focuses on a once tranquil boy who suddenly turned rather violent. And it was all because this specific power was based around violence shifting his personality. Now I won't talk about the free will question at large because God knows I've discussed it enough on the channel, but I still find this aspect of the series incredibly interesting. Maybe I'll finally make that video someday. Quirks in My Hero Academia, while at first being seen as just superpowers, have transformed into something similar. With them and how they impact both the person's life and personality, being heavily analyzed in several character studies later on in the series. Something I feel gets overlooked in discussions centered around the anime and manga. A great example of this would be Eri and Shigaraki, both killing their parents with their quirks, which obviously changed the entire trajectory of their lives. With Eri, she became someone who didn't think herself worthy of being saved, and with Shigaraki turned away from the hero-dominated society, he became someone who grew to vehemently hate it. But these are both cases of someone's quirk not necessarily inherently shifting their personality, but rather it shifted their circumstances, and that in turn changed who they were. There's an extra step there, and that's important, as I find it, well, to be much less interesting than the subject of today's video, Himiko Toga, and the latest episode of the anime. Toga is someone who loves blood, like, a lot. And it's implied in this episode, we can have generally assumed before that, that this is directly due to her quirk, where she has to ingest blood to become someone else. This then had led to her obsession with both blood and the concept of entirely becoming various other people. I'm sure the latter is also due to her putting on a mask and not being allowed to be herself, thus making her want to actually become other people, but her quirk factor surely has a hand to play in this as well even aside from just the circumstances of her life. This, of course, is a case without and dependent on the middleman. Her meta-ability changed her very personality, and this was then compounded by her self-repression based on society shunning and depression. I mean, you can't just start drinking people's blood, right? 
Well, it kind of depends, actually. And to best frame this distinction of societal morality, I want to give an example I found in Stanford's lecture by Professor Robert Sapolsky on schizophrenia. In this lecture, Sapolsky talks about living in an African village, a society with an extremely different culture than most of the world. In this village, there is a woman who killed the goat by biting it in the throat. The people were in a frenzy and went to see Sapolsky so he could do what I imagined to be put the fear of God into this woman by driving up in his car. This woman was known to be a recluse and one who hears voices. Sapolsky then asks his friend in the village, well, you hear voices too, right? And in this culture, it was normal to hear the voices of dead ancestors, but his friend responded with, but this is different. Different. They then took the woman to the nearest government hospital 25 miles away, which was a small hut, and then told Sapolsky to, when he asked them what they should do now, to drive away. Now it's important to note that in this society, it was perfectly normal to kill goats. It's even normal to drink cups of cow blood during celebrations. But it was the way in which this woman did it, as women were allowed to kill goats and especially not in such a savage manner. A small technicality, and yet in the stories of this village, she then became the villain. The villain. I bring this story up for a very important reason. We deem people we don't understand, or even worse, those that bring societal norms as crazy, or even worse, as villains. This episode hits the nail on the head multiple times as Ochako, wanting to break what is considered normal in hero society, just wants to have a conversation with Toga to understand the villain. She importantly doesn't forgive or excuse her actions, as Toga is a murderer. And in most cultures, what I think should be objective morality, cold-blooded murder is not okay. Yet murderers aren't born in a vacuum. While their personalities may be twisted from birth or due to a quirk they developed at a young age, although it's most likely not the case, it's ultimately on society as a whole for not just misunderstanding these people, that's normal. But for completely shunning these people away before it's too late. Before they hurt someone. And I want to make it clear. We as a worldly culture should not accept killers or other irredeemable criminals. But again, they weren't born criminals. They were born human. And yet someone like Toga was told from an extremely early age that she was inhuman. And while this is an incredible injustice to the individual, it's worse on a societal level. With the proper treatment and in turn acceptance for those deemed as crazy, we can avoid things like murder as best as we reasonably can. I don't want to compare the real world to a fictional Japanese cartoon too much as that would be wrong, but the point I'm trying to make here is this. We can help stop crime by attacking the root of it, helping and reaching out a hand to the children who are indeed different, ones that may or may not develop into criminals of all different sorts. Many individuals who express things like, for example, they want to kill animals and drink their blood, are automatically exiled and shunned from normal society. Based on, of course, what is considered normal in said society. They are alone, and that is going to do nothing but make their urges worse. Remember, the people I'm talking about here haven't done anything wrong as of yet. They just have the urge to do so. They can be stopped before they hurt someone, and they can be adequately treated. Deeming someone as crazy is simply an excuse to not want to understand someone, to not want to have a conversation with them, to not want to help them, to not even try. This is the inherent failing of My Hero Academia society and what has ultimately given birth to the League of Villains. Something I imagine the new generation of up-and-coming heroes will address, as Ochako so beautifully does in this episode. If you've been a fan of the channel for a bit, you will know this. I'm schizophrenic. 
Well, to be more accurate, I have schizoaffective disorder with bipolar features, but the distinction doesn't really matter here. What matters is that society has historically shunned people like me, lobotomized them to make them normal. And while this may make me a bit biased, it also means that while I can't necessarily relate to Toga, I can, in a small way, understand her. Not the whole murdering people and drinking their blood thing, but the feeling of being different. Of being shunned because of that difference. I get that. I understand it. So then, what is a villain? I don't know. You decide that for yourself. But before you do so, remember these words. Criminals are not born criminals. They're born human. And humans deserve, if nothing else, a conversation. For you to at least try to understand them before it's too late, before this smile is gone forever. And as always, thank you for watching.